So let's now use the properties that we just calculated to solve a couple of questions that have to do with phase diagrams. In this case, what we're going to look at is an ideal solution that is 5 moles of benzene and 3.25 moles of toluene, and that basically we put them in a piston and cylinder assembly, which just means that we're able to vary the pressure inside the chamber that we place the toluene and benzene in. And so then at 298 Kelvin, we know that the partial pressures of the pure substances are 12.85 kilopascals for the benzene and 3.85 kilopascals for the toluene. And so the question starts as, if the pressure starts at 101.3 kilopascals, when does the vapor phase first appear? And the second question is, what is the composition of the vapor phase when it does first appear? So the picture of what this looks like is if we were to draw a pressure vapor phase diagram or a pressure mole fraction phase diagram, and I'm going to draw it in terms of benzene, then what we have here is we start at a point where we're at 101.3 kilopascals, and that if we were to then continue to draw this phase diagram, we have mole fraction of 1, mole fraction of 0, we're going to have the partial pressure of toluene, we're going to have the partial pressure of pure benzene, and then we can draw our phase diagram lines to look something like this. And so like I said before, we're starting up here at 101.3 kilopascals, and that I've just drawn the x in an arbitrary spot. We don't actually know what this number is just yet. We could calculate it, but we don't know it just right off the bat. But the first question is asking, what happens when we lower the pressure until we hit this first phase boundary, because at this first phase boundary is when we have, or when we'll start to see vapor, because that's when we see the liquid vapor phase. When we start, we're only in the liquid phase. And then in the second part of the problem, what it's asking us is, what is the composition of the vapor phase? And we get that by basically drawing a straight line across, and we see that we get this second point right here, and that'll then tell us what the vapor phase is of the benzene, which then we can use to calculate both phases. So for the first problem, it wants us to find what is this pressure. And then for the second part, it wants us to find what is this mole fraction of the vapor of the benzene. So starting with problem one, we know that this liquid, liquid vapor phase boundary is drawn as the total pressure being equal to in this case, the pressure of the, the partial pressure of pure toluene plus the partial pressure of pure benzene minus the partial pressure of pure toluene times the mole fraction of benzene in the liquid. And the mole fraction of the benzene in the liquid, well, that's just equal to the number of moles of benzene in the liquid divided by the number of moles of benzene in the liquid plus the number of moles of toluene in the liquid. And those numbers are given to us in the problem. So that's 5.00 divided by 5.00 plus 3.25. And so then the mole fraction of the original liquid is 0 0.606. So we can take that number and plug that back into this original expression. P total is equal to, well, the partial pressure of pure toluene. That's 3.85. And that's going to be plus the partial pressure of pure benzene, 12.85 minus 3.85 times 0 0.606. The total pressure then is going to be equal to 3.85 plus 5.45. So the total pressure is equal to 9.3 kilopascals. And so this number right here, this 9.3 kilopascals, that's the number that we are finding right here. That's the pressure as we lower down from 101.3 kilopascals, as we lower it down to 9.3 kilopascals, that's when we then will see, start to see the vapor start to form because we've now hit this phase boundary. Now that we've found this pressure, we can now start to figure out what is this composition of the mole fraction of benzene in the vapor phase because that's found at when this pressure that we just calculated, this 9.3 kilopascals, basically meets this liquid vapor vapor phase boundary. And so the equation that we use to draw that liquid vapor vapor phase boundary is P total is equal to the partial pressure of pure toluene times the partial pressure of pure benzene. And that's divided by the partial pressure of pure benzene minus 
the partial pressure of pure benzene minus the partial pressure of pure toluene, all times the mole fraction of benzene in the vapor phase. Substituting in numbers, we've got 9.3 being the total pressure. Partial pressure of pure toluene is 3.85 times 12.85, and that's going to be divided by 12.85 minus 12.85 minus 3.85, all times the mole fraction of benzene in the vapor phase. If I continue to simplify, 9.3 is equal to 49.5 divided by 12.85 minus 9 times the mole fraction of benzene in the vapor phase. I'm going to continue to simplify. I'm going to basically multiply both sides by 12.85 minus 9 times the mole fraction of benzene in the vapor phase and divide both sides by 9.3. So 12.85 minus 9 times the mole fraction of benzene in the vapor phase is equal to 49.5 divided by 9.3. I'm then going to continue to rearrange. I'm going to move my 49.5 divided by 9.3 to the left-hand side and my minus 9 times the mole fraction of benzene in the vapor phase to the right-hand side. And so I'm going to get 12.85 minus 5.32 when I do that division. And that's going to be equal to 9 times the mole fraction of benzene in the vapor phase. If I subtract 12.85 minus 5.32, I get 7.53. And to that, if I divide both sides by 9, then I get that equal to the mole fraction of benzene in the vapor phase. And so what that means is that my mole fraction of benzene in the vapor phase is equal to 0 0.836. And if I wanted to know the mole fraction of toluene in the vapor phase, well that's just 1 minus 0 0.836 since I've only got a two component mixture. And that means my mole fraction of toluene in the vapor phase is 0.164. And you can actually see here just in this first quick calculation that I started with a mole fraction in the liquid of 0.606, and then by dropping the pressure, I've created a vapor that has a mole fraction of benzene of 0.836. And so by simply just dropping the pressure, like I showed in the problem, that I create a vapor that has a mole fraction that's actually higher, that's higher than the mole fraction of benzene. And so you can start to appreciate that this is how you can then start to separate the two mixtures, because if I were to take this vapor that I have here of just the toluene and the benzene, and I were to condense this to a liquid and then revaporize it again, I would then increase again the mole fraction inside that vapor. And it's through this process that I would continually separate these two volatile liquids. In that previous example, we just saw how fractional distillation occurs in practice. Through a series of pressure changes, one component of a volatile mixture can be separated from the other. So at constant temperature, we vary the pressure to separate the components. Starting at A, where the mixture is only a liquid, we drop the pressure to the liquid-liquid vapor phase boundary. This means that the mole fraction of the vapor for one component, in this case benzene, is determined at point B, while the composition of toluene is found by taking 1 minus the mole fraction of benzene. What can be seen is that the mole fraction of benzene in the liquid is roughly 0.2, but in the vapor phase it's about 0.5. So if we separate the vapor from the liquid and raise the pressure on the vapor to condense it, 0.C, we now have a liquid with a much higher benzene concentration, roughly about 0.5. The vapor of this separated liquid has an even higher mole fraction of benzene, found at point D, roughly about 0.8. Therefore, through a series of steps where the vapor is separated from the liquid and condensed, the resulting solution become more and more concentrated with one of the two components. This is how fractional distillation works. A temperature mole fraction phase diagram can also be created. In the temperature mole fraction diagram, the lower region is the liquid, the mid region is the liquid vapor, and the top region is the vapor phase. Starting at A1, we heat the mixture to the liquid vapor phase boundary at A2. This creates a vapor where the mole fraction of component A is much larger than the liquid, found at A2 prime. Cooling the separated vapor, A3, condenses it, 
where the vapor from this condensed liquid has an even higher mole fraction of component A, found at A3 prime. By continuing these separation cooling steps, we can also separate two components of a mixture. 